Hello friends, today I want to talk to you about the basics of Bless. Just so you can get a better idea of the game, I will tell you exactly how the game feels, what are the core functions and most importantly, what's the game all about. Let's start with the beginning. The game has two factions that are at war with each other, each faction with its own unique races. And if you play one faction, you cannot play the other on the same account, similar to how Aeon works. Each race also starts in their own zone, which is, as you can imagine, awesome. The character customization is very good and very detailed, even though you cannot create extremely stupid looking characters, which is really not needed anyway. Bless has healers and tanks, which makes it a holy trinity game, which in turn is fantastic. In total, there are eight classes, Guardian, your hard tank, Paladin, your main healer and optional tank, Berserker, your heavy DPS and optional tank, Mage, you know what mages do, Assassins, you also know what sins do, Mystic, your awesome support slash DPS, Ranger, you're familiar with Rangers also, and Warlock, a summoner slash debuff class, similar to Spirit Masters from Aeon and Necromancers from Guild Wars 2. Warlock is not yet available to play though, so you'll have to hold up on that one till future patches. Each class has many customization options in terms of skills and builds, and even though we obviously know that some builds are going to be very popular and used by the majority, you can still build yourself for specific encounters as you wish, 1v1s, open world, etc. It's basically an upgraded version of the stigma system in Aeon, and since your skill bar has 12 skills per build at any given time, it's also similar to how Wildstar works. I absolutely love the skill system, by the way. The top targeting combat looks nice and flashy and feels exactly like you would expect it to feel, which is normal and fluent. Each class can be played with top targeting without the need to use action combat, but there is an option of action combat which is being reworked on by the devs at the time of this video, because it has some flaws. To be honest, I really don't see the need to play action combat in Bless, nor will I die if the devs remove the action combat altogether. It's really not important because if you think about it for one minute, top targeting MMORPGs have about a thousand times more players than action combat MMORPGs, which kinda tells you a lot, it tells you that it just doesn't matter. The leveling is done by the old school typical method of questing, very linear, very simple to understand and at times very boring. It's a leveling method that has been working since EverQuest Online 20 years ago, so yeah. There are other old school leveling methods that are not very efficient, like crafting and being power leveled by a high level friend. The devs also did try to add some new type of questing called monster hunting, but that doesn't feel as rewarding for now, so yeah. Having a holy trinity obviously means that some classes do fewer damage than others, which means grouping up for leveling might be beneficial for guardians, uh, paladins, etc. Leveling takes you to all the places that you need to be at, dungeon entrances, open world PvP zones. Beginner zones are PvP free, and starting with level 30-ish, the questing is gonna take place in PvP zones. Same as in Aeon when, if you remember, you reached level 19, it took you to Elden and Morhem and uh, those zones were full with open world PvP goodness, which was really awesome. This is another uh, good concept that Bless brings. Open world is actually very open. You can walk or fly to almost anywhere you want to. And that's great because the world and the game in general is the most beautiful MMORPG that was ever made. World being completely open just gives you more eye candy to enjoy. Since um, I've mentioned PvP, you already found out that there's open world PvP, which by the way also means dungeon entrances can be camped and that makes it for uh, more juicy rivalry between factions and some nice drama. Uh, some dungeons are in the north and some in the south obviously, so each faction can camp their own really. Um, there is also 3v3 PvP for which you can queue up at certain times, same as in Aeon. Uh, there's a 100 versus 100 PvP uh, with better rewards, again can queue up at certain times. And on top of everything, there are sieges for territories where guilds can fight for land, which comes with benefits. Similar to Aeon sieges, this again at certain times, which is awesome and it gets you into a schedule. 
PvE is challenging if you do it at the appropriate level and it's not challenging at all if you are 10 levels um, ish above the mobs slash bosses because they will miss almost all of their attacks on you. This mechanics makes for some uh, interesting possibilities which I will talk about in a later video. Endgame PvE instances are definitely not easy, but they are not impossible either. For those of you who have played um, Aeon, Endgame Dungeons uh, difficulty in Bless feels similar to Dark Poeta in 1.9, Beshmudir in 2.0, etc. Maybe 10% easier here in Bless. If you want to make things even harder to prove your skill and gear, you can always do three-man content or even try speed record kills um, and that makes it a lot more difficult, obviously. There are many different instances, but at end game there are two that are very important to farm. Um, dungeons also have an elite mode, which is the equivalent of a hard mode in Aeon um, or a challenge mode in Guild Wars 2. At end game, um, there are also raids for world bosses, which are amazing and rewarding. Same as in Aeon with the Menotios back in the days, if you remember, and so on. Um, in terms of gear, yes, in Bless, gear matters as much as it does in Aeon. And yes, there is PvP gear with PvP stats, which is great. Um, there is also PvE gear that gives more stats, but no PvP bonuses. Uh, PvE gear can be farmed in dungeons or crafted using endgame mats plus the three main currencies of the game, let's say, honor points, dungeon points and discovery points. PvP gear can be crafted using the same method but with slightly different mats needed. How you get these points and mats is material for another video. Gear can also be further upgraded with runes and there's also an RNG factor, which by the way I absolutely love, uh, when getting gear which is um, the extra stat that you get. The extra stat system is similar to how Terra's random attributes on gear works. Basically you re-roll your piece for a cost of XYZ currency uh, until you get the attribute that you want. In conclusion, Bless has many solid game ideas in its foundation and solid basics make for a long-lasting good game. If you're the type of person that likes to compare games with other games, you can think of Bless as a game that uh, gets some of the best features from Aeon, Terra, Wildstar and combines them into one package. That was it for this video guys, uh, I will see you soon and I wish you lots of love.